Hello and welcome to Channel Sport this morning. Glad you could join us again. I'm Tyler Salah. A very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us as always. Uh, this is the midweek edition of the show. I'm Yemi Adebayo. Let's start you off with um, the biggest thing happening in this part of the world, talking about the preparation for the 2018 FIFA World Cup qualifier between the Super Eagles of Nigeria and the Chipolopolo of Zambia. Three days to go. The countdown begins to that very crucial uh, World Cup qualifier in Uyo. Still talking about that game, we move on and tell you that uh, the Chipolopolo are expected in the country today. They've been training in Ghana, uh, preparing for this game. Uh, said a lot of things about um, the Super Eagles and what they hope to do in Uyo, but they will be arriving the country today. Yes, uh, yeah, safe journey, safe travels to uh, the Zambian national team. Also on the show this time, it's been a while we talked about basketball, but that's what we're going to do today because there's a major, major change in the NBA All-Star format. format. Um, basically, the, the main story is it's no longer going to be East versus West. I mean, okay. that's massive. I mean, there's been talks about, uh, you know, it's getting a bit redundant now. Same uh, the, faces. The West, you know, always dominating and beating uh, the hell out of the East and all that. So the, the NBA, as well as the uh, Players Association, come together and have now decided that, okay, let's just, you know, bring a bit of a, uh, of a change to the old thing now. So from 2018, it's no longer going to be East versus uh, West. I, I think it's a very uh, laudable uh, initiative. I'll just go through the major changes, uh, basically. Uh, that's what we have on the screen. Uh, like I said earlier, no more Eastern Conference versus the Western Conference. Captains are now to draft from a pool of voted players. So if you get voted, uh, you know, uh, somehow, whether by the fans or whether by the coaches, the captains will now decide to choose who makes the all-star team regardless of their conference affiliation. So that's it there. And the two top vote getters uh, are to be named as captains uh, as well. While uh, another feature of the new uh, revamped uh, format is that all-star teams uh, will now play uh, for a charity of their choice. Uh, the only question this would is, be who gets the first pick? Uh, for the players, uh, if, if in the pool you, you have this guy you like, you want him to be on the team, and the other guy who is also the captain. So I guess they saw that out. Yeah, they saw it's that It's going to be very interesting. Mm. It's going to be very interesting. Uh, you have issues where you see some uh, regular f uh, faces. Uh, well, if your performance is consistent, you'll be there. But you know, just a change. If something is, like in your words, if it's beginning to get redundant, you need to change so that you know, the, the interest and everything is going to be So there. if you keep the interest, basically, that's what they've done. And yeah. I think it's very interesting. Imagine, so uh, it, it's not been competitive uh, in the last uh, few, few years. years. Now, the West Ham have been the dominant side. Uh, but with this new change now, uh, you'd expect, uh, you know, a mixture. Uh, you expect a more competitive all-star game. Uh, and um, I think that's what they're trying to achieve uh, with this change. Yeah, and I think there's going to be more bonding as well. I mean, if a guy goes all the way to ensure that you are in his, you are in his team, mm. uh, probably believes that, oh, this guy is good. Uh, of course, before you get into that place, you must have been voted. I mean, you, you must, must have, have had, been voted. You must have had a good season uh, as well. I think it will make the players uh, bond more, and uh, we'll see. And hopefully, they'll be putting up the kind of performance they've, they've put in the regular season and the uh, for the ones that get into the playoffs, Correct. Uh, they'll be putting that, those kind of performances yes. uh, to wow basketball fans. Yeah, so that's it now. That's the major change coming from the National Basketball Association. It will be the first time that the NBA All-Star will not feature the East against the West. So that's it for basketball. Let's quickly move on now. Let's talk about boxing. And that's our fight for supremacy. Uh, we all know the outcome, controversial draw uh, between Gennady Golovkin and Sao Canelo Alvarez. But we'll step closer to a rematch now. The rematch everyone has been clamoring for right after the official uh, decisions of the judges. And uh, that's because the WBC, that's the World Boxing Council, they've had ordered a rematch of that fight between Triple G and Canelo. And this is good news for a lot of boxing fans out there uh, because um, prior to this announcement, negotiations and discussions have already you know, started. 
but to get an official, you know, stamp from one of the bodies uh, involved in this uh, matchup, uh, it just uh, takes it um, to the next level. Yeah. And it's looking like we're going to see this fight sometime next year, at least around May-ish. Yeah, I, I believe so. Um, WBC President Mauricio Sulaiman says, look, this is a fight everybody wants to see. And so let's make it happen. Correct. And um, on, on the honor of both boxers, they said immediately after the bout, interestingly, both, both fighters thought they won. Uh, that, that's the funny side yes, of it. The, it the, the fans have their own views, but for both boxers and their camps, they felt uh, I've been robbed, so I have to do this again. And, and both fighters have agreed that even before the WBC now officially put his stamp on this bout to ensure that this bout takes place, both boxers say, oh, we're going to do this again. And for, for boxing purists and for us on this side, it's good when, you know, big fights happen. It's good when big matchups like this, when uh, you don't see boxers run away from those you expect them to oh, fight. No. And at the end of this, whoever comes out as a victor, uh, I mean, it's a win-win situation. If you lose, you still have your respect intact, because a lot of people will take the rematch uh, immediately. If you win, you win the battle of supremacy. But even if you lose, you live long in the minds of uh, boxing fans and a whole lot of people as somebody who didn't run away from a fight, as somebody who's a great athlete as well. Mm, yes, absolutely. And there's a reason why these two guys are, you know, uh, one of the most, uh, you have to say, those two guys, um, mm -hmm. uh, Canelo and Triple G, uh, they are highly, highly uh, revered when it comes to boxing uh, in this, um, in our generation, in this era. So we're looking forward to um, that particular fight. We don't know yet when it's going to go down, but discussions ongoing already for, for the matchup between Canelo Alvarez and Triple G, that's the rematch. So I will definitely bring you more updates on that one as we get them. So that's it for boxing. Let's move on quickly. Let's go to tennis now. And this time we're going to the China Open. And uh, major upset uh, alert yesterday. Upset averted yesterday involving world number one, Rafael Nadal. Nadal had to save two match points to, you know, uh, to avoid being knocked out by Lucas Poy. It was very, very, very close, but Nadal came through eventually 4 6, 7 6, 7 5 to advance to the next yeah. round. I mean, imagine Nadal after uh, the eyes of actually the going euphoria. to the Labour yeah. Cup and leading Europe to, to, to win and just coming out back to the ATP tour and losing the first round would have been disastrous. But Ooh. the champion that he is, you know, he had to dig deep, went to the trenches, came out unscathed. Yeah, that's what champions do. I, you know, you, you don't really... It was going to be a big upset, like you said, if, if uh, Lucas Puel had, had, had done the job. But trust Rafa, uh, dog deep. Uh, like I said, champions, it's champion stuff. Uh, when, when, when a champion is down, you don't, you don't rule them out. You don't count them out. You know, uh, they come back, they fight, uh, they give their best, and they do what they have to do. And he did what he had to do here. Uh, he, and we're, we're here talking about him. He's in the next round of the China <laughs> Open. And, um, I mean, good luck to him. We'll see how he ends. Uh, I, I want to see how 2017 hands for most of these uh, top guys. A lot of them are already thinking about the ATP, season and the AT, ATP that's, World Tour. That's and you, you have to keep yourself in shape. Not just about the money, the ranking points and everything. You have to keep yourself in shape. And you know, most of these uh, matches when you get to play. Absolutely, you're correct. So that's it for Nadal, still going strong. We move on to another player who's had a great, great year on tour. That's Alexander Zverev. I mean... Uh, what a player, what a season he's had. Uh, he's world number four now, so it shows you his rise has been quite uh, remarkable uh, this year, world number four. But he's still, you know, still playing good tennis. He's also through uh, yeah. to the next round of the China Open. Uh, he had to really, uh, it, was, it was not straightforward exactly. The first set, 6-3, and mm -hmm. uh, the second set was a lot tighter. Really so close. Tie break, 7-6. Um, Zverev uh, won that one against Kyle Edmond. Yeah. This guy right here is, um, you know, he's a, he's a next gen star. But I think he's here for good now. I mean, when you're world number four, uh, there's no point saying you're the future again. You're now, he's here. And I think he has a couple of majors in him uh, in the next couple of years. I agree with you. I think his time starts now. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's just take it from me. I think his time starts now. Absolutely. Uh, 2017 has been amazing uh, for this young lad. He's, uh, he's done a lot. I, I hope he doesn't uh, uh, visual out. Uh, I think the new world order will the world order will change in 2018. In really? 20 I think it's going to change in 2018. Okay. In I'm 2017, listening. the golden oldies Came just back. probably gave us, you know, a sign off. My opinion, oh, okay. sign off. But the, 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 there's going to be a new world order. 
and I'm looking at Zverev as one of the guys right. that to will lead. Lay, lay claim, right. bust into, not just bust in there, remain uh, mm. in, in the top, top five. It's, it's a tall order, I know. I've seen a lot of players come in. I've seen a lot of highly rated players disappoint us after all the good things we've said about them. But, but I think this young man that's, uh, some, that's, that, that's some shouts there, Yemi, because uh, when you say it's going to be a new world order, and uh, you're saying uh, Rafael Nadal and uh, uh, Roger Federer have just given us a, you know, they've just signed out basically with this amazing year they've had, you know, sharing all the majors uh, between them. I don't think so. I yeah. think Rafael Nadal and... It's a boat claim, I know. Yeah. It's Rafael a boat claim. and Roger, I think they'll be there and thereabouts next year. I believe... Andy Murray and Nova Djokovic will be back stronger as well. So, so when you have those guys still playing really good, I don't see where the change is going to come if from. Those four guys will be there. Understand my the point, Tyre. If they're year. playing, they are around, and they are not in the top five, they are not dominating. They will, that's, that's, my, that's my point. I'm saying they're going to be there. They're going to be top four still. Still, so, so you mean I'm saying there's no change you're still going to have no change Federer, whatsoever. Nadal, Stan, Murray, Djokovic, that five, no, it's still going to be that I one. I don't think it's going right, to be good. Those it's four, good. I said those four, not Stan, but Okay, Vincent. not those Stan, four, those four. Okay, fine, Djokovic, good. Murray, Nadal, We're in October. Federer. We'll be there. We're in October. Time 2018 is not far away. Let's okay. move on. We're still talking <laughs> tennis. Yeah. I understand we're going to Japan. Yeah. Uh, we talked about uh, Roger Federer and I beg your pardon, uh, Nadal avoiding that upset. Mm -hmm. And one man couldn't just get it done uh, in Japan. I'm talking about um, Dominic, Dominic, Thiem. Dominic Thiem. He's out in the first round. Of the Japan Open after losing against them, um, yeah. Steve Johnson. Steve Johnson is a decent player, but I mean, when you're going up against um, Dominic Tim, who's been one of the better players on tour this year as well, so you expect um, Dominic uh, to win this one and uh, not to bow out in the first round. But it wasn't meant to be for him. Steve Johnson played inspired tennis on the day and won in three sets of four six, seven six, six four to advance to the second round in Tokyo. Yeah. Um Immediately after that defeat, Dominic Tim started talking about uh, season ending um, ATP tour that is going to uh, put all his energy, all his attention, <laughs> all his focus uh, on that one. You will lose games uh, as part of it. You're not going to win um, all the time, even though both of us agreed that we, we didn't see uh, this happening uh, this early uh, to, to this young man. But, but of course, I mean, it happens. So it it's, it's, it's how you recover. Uh, that, that really matters, and I think he has it in him to, you know, uh, recover uh, and move on. I think we're done with tennis uh, well, done. with that. Uh, let's quickly go to uh, Formula One. Um, we said a lot of things about, uh, you know, uh, Chinaze was here on, I think, on, on Monday, Monday. And, and, and he said something that I keep remembering that uh, Lewis Hamilton uh, taught uh, Sebastian Vettel what to do. Uh, <laughs> you know, taught when, him a lesson. when you have Max. Vestipin really close by you. Just let him, let him go. go. <laughs> Just let him go. Don't it's not going to cost you the race. Nah. Just let him go. And I think whoever, I mean, whatever Hamilton was thinking at that point, that he allowed that to happen, it was an inspired decision. It didn't struggle. It turned out to be a wise uh, you one know, now. It turned out to be a wise one. But uh, Max Vestipin, um, he's been talking. Um, golden moments uh, for him. Uh, 20th birthday, he's been reflecting. Um, on uh, his uh, and, victory. And he's looking forward to the Japan Grand Prix as well. As well. So uh, uh, let's listen to the young man, how excited he is and his preparation uh, for the next uh, Grand Prix.